Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Idhaya Raja Mani. I uh, am from uh, Chemical Engineering, uh, IIT Madras. Uh, in this module, uh, we will be talking about heat transfer with phase change by boiling. Uh, boiling is a process where a liquid is transformed into a vapor. And this happens when you take a liquid and increase the temperature of the liquid beyond its saturation temperature at the given pressure, then it boils. This process can be shown in the phase diagram. A phase diagram is a diagram which says in a given temperature and pressure conditions whether a particular component will exist as a liquid or a solid or a vapor. For example, in this case, when you plot pressure versus temperature, you have a solid phase here, a liquid phase here and vapor phase here. All the red lines that demarks two different phases are the phase boundaries where two phases exist as phase equilibrium. To understand the boiling process, you can start at point A which is in liquid form and at constant pressure you increase the temperature. When you increase the temperature of this liquid, the liquid remains as it is until it touches this red line which is a phase boundary and the vapor starts forming. And when you cross this boundary to point B, then the whole liquid becomes a vapor. So this boiling process, basically we can um, uh, illustrate this boiling process through this path where a liquid is increased, liquid's temperature is increased beyond T sat and the boiling happens. In chemical process industries, uh, boiling is an important operation uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is carried out in uh, various uh, processes. For example, uh, in the uh, generation of uh, steam from water, uh, we use boilers, water tube boilers and fire tube boilers. In, in distillation column, at the bottom of the distillation column, we have this kettle type or thermosiphon uh, boilers where we heat the multi-component liquid, vaporize them and then send it through, uh, through the uh, distillation column. And in evaporators, we boil off the solvent so as to crystallize a product. Uh, using uh, falling film evaporators or agitated film evaporators. Here is an example of a kettle type a reboiler that is used in uh, distillation columns. As far as boiling is concerned, there are different ways in which you can do this experiment. For example, uh, you can have, uh, you can uh, provide a hot surface inside a liquid and uh, increase the temperature of the surface beyond the saturation temperature so that the boiling can happen. You could have a metal wire and then apply a potential across this wire and by resistive heating, you can uh, provide a hot uh, surface on which uh, liquid can boil. Alternatively, you could have a, a, a cylindrical tube. Uh, within this tube, you could send a condensing steam or a flue gas so as to increase the surface temperature of this, of this tube. And this tube could be um, exposed to a boiling liquid where uh, the liquid will uh, begin to boil from the surface of this uh, heater. Uh, the other possibility is. Uh, uh, send the uh, liquid that you want to boil through a cylindrical tube which is externally heated by another fluid. Uh, here the liquid enters in one side and leaves as a vapor on the other side. So these are possible uh, experimental setup of uh, boiling. And this boiling is a very complicated process uh, where uh, bubbles form on the heater surface and it grows as it grows bigger. Uh, due to the density difference between the vapor and the liquid, uh, uh, the buoyancy lifts the droplet from the surface, uh, the droplet from the, uh, the, the bubble from the surface to the uh, uh, liquid uh, interface. Now, as the bubble moves up due to buoyancy, it induces a local mixing of the fluid, and this uh, causes uh, the uh, it, this basically increases the heat transfer coefficient here. This bubble dynamics, the formation, the growth, the disengagement and uh, the elevation to the surface, all of this are strongly coupled to the, uh, uh, the temperature difference, the thermophysical property of the liquid as well as the interfacial tension. In th when we talk about boiling, we often uh, define the delta T, the temperature difference as the temperature of the hot surface minus the temperature of the uh, saturated liquid. T W minus T sat. It is also known as a degree of superheat. So, in the formation of a vapor bubble in the liquid, the interfacial tension uh, plays an important role. 
to see this consider a, a vapor bubble or a gas bubble of radius r in a liquid. The finite interfacial tension between the vapor and the liquid will try to shrink the bubble. For this bubble to be stable, you will need to have a pressure in the vapor to be larger than that of the liquid, so that the interfacial forces can be counterbalanced. By applying mechanical equilibrium for this case, one can show that the pressure difference between the vapor and the liquid should satisfy Young Laplace equation given as delta P is equal to 2 gamma by R. As the bubble size is very small, the delta P increases drastically, which means to form a very small bubble, there should be a large pressure difference between the vapor and the liquid. Now, we will see this influence in the formation of a vapor bubble during boiling. Let us say you have a liquid at pressure P and temperature T sat. In this case, if a vapor bubble were to form, the saturation pressure, the liquid pressure and the system pressure all of them are equal, which means that Young Laplace equation cannot be satisfied. That means, a small bubbles will be unstable. However, if we increase the temperature above T sat, such that delta T is positive, the saturation pressure of the vapor can be larger than the system pressure and Young Laplace equation can be satisfied for some bubble size. The relationship between the delta T and the bubble size could be derived and it is shown here. This equation clearly tells you that depending upon uh, a positive delta T, uh, bubbles of radius r minimum and above will be stable and bubbles of size less than r minimum will be unstable because it violates Young Laplace equations. So, in this way the formation of vapor bubble in boiling requires the liquid temperature to be slightly above the saturation temperature. So, we saw that the interfacial tension between the liquid and vapor controls the bubble size during boiling. However, in boiling experiment the bubbles are formed not in the bulk liquid, but on the heating surface. There we will find that three different interfacial tensions come to play. We have the interfacial tension between the solid and liquid, between solid and vapor and the vapor and liquid. Based on the competition between these three interfacial tensions, the vapor bubble makes a contact angle of theta and it can be shown that the cos theta is equal to gamma S L minus gamma S V by gamma V L, where theta is the contact angle. Now, we will see that depending upon the interfacial tension between the solid and liquid and between solid and vapor, different possible values of theta may occur. If the interfacial tension between the solid and vapor is higher than that of the liquid and uh, solid, the contact angle will range between 90 degrees to 180 degrees. This situation is shown as figure A, where the bubble makes very high contact angle, which means it is very easy for the bubble to release, to be released from the surface. Thereby, new liquid can come to the heating surface, new vapor bubble may happen and the continuous formation of bubble is feasible. On the other hand, if the interfacial tension between the solid and vapor is smaller than that of between solid and liquid, the contact angle will range between 0 to 90 and hence the vapor bubble may wet the heating surface. This situation is shown in figure C, where the bubble tries to spread on the heating surface, limiting the liquid accessing the surface directly. Therefore, in boiling experiment, it is important to control the interfacial tension of the 
solid and the liquid as well as between the solid and the vapor. By proper tuning of this interfacial tension, we can facilitate a faster disengagement of vapor bubbles from the surface and avoid film type boiling. Now there are two kinds of boiling that we often come across, one is called this pool boiling, the other one is called forced convection boiling. We already saw these pictures, in pool boiling uh, the liquid is static, it is quiescent macroscopically, although mixing happens via free convection and due to the bubble dynamics, bubble uh, growth and uh, detachment, as a whole the liquid is stationary. In the case of forced convection boiling, the liquid is sent through a tube by a pressure gradient or by any other external means, where the mixing happens not only by uh, natural convection, but also by forced convection. And often in the tube, there exists a two phase flow, because in the beginning it is all liquid and the vapor starts forming somewhere in between the, in, 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 in the middle of the tube and towards the end of the tube it is all vapor, so in between you have two phase flow in this case. Now this boiling uh, was uh, uh, studied by Nukiyama uh, with a very simple uh, apparatus, uh, where a pool of liquid is taken and uh, a metal wire made up of nichrome uh, is, uh, 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 is introduced and there is a potential applied across this wire which is externally controlled. By applying a, a known potential and calculating the current through this wire, the power input or the heat flux input could be controlled. Now he measured the temperature of this wire by looking at the relationship between the resistivity of the wire and the uh, current passing through it. So this is a nice experiment where you can control the power input or the flux input and look at how temperature of the wire changes and how the boiling happens. So in this case Q is fixed, the heat flux is fixed and the temperature difference is a dependable variable. The outcome of this Nukiyama's experiment is shown in this figure, where we are plotting the heat flux versus delta T, the temperature difference between the hot wire and the saturation temperature of the liquid. So you can see that initially the heat flux increases with the delta T and then it increases even uh, faster and reaches a maximum value of heat flux. And when you increase the heat flux even beyond and there is a sudden jump into a, a higher delta T value right here and then again Q increases with delta T. Now, when he did the experiment in reverse, that means he decreased the heat flux slowly and the delta T also decreased up to some point, the minimum Q flux and after that, the delta T suddenly becomes very small and switches to this point. In this particular power controlled boiling experiment, the regime between this maximum heat flux and the minimum heat flux is not traceable. On the forward path, the heat flux, once the heat flux increases from this point, the delta T jumps to this. In the reverse path, when the heat flux is below this, the delta P, delta T decreases below this. To understand this boiling curve, we classify the whole boiling experiments into four regimes. One, free convection, two, nuclear boiling, 3, transition boiling and 4, film boiling. In each of these regimes, different boiling mechanisms occur and because of the different boiling mechanisms, the heat transfer coefficient is also different in each of these regimes. First, if you look at uh, the delta T below 5 degree Celsius, where the temperature difference between the hot wire and the saturation temperature, when this is within 5 degree Celsius, we predominantly see a free convective boiling regime, where the fluid is mixed due to a free convection. That means, the fluid near the hot surface has a lower density, so it ascends and the liquid on the top has a higher density, it descends. So this sets in a natural convective flow within the pool of the liquid. 
In this particular free convective boiling regime, heat flux is proportional to delta T power 1.25 and we also know from Newton's law of cooling that Q is proportional to delta T. Therefore, the heat transfer coefficient in this particular regime will scale as delta T to the power 0.25 and this particular correlation is also seen in a free convection heat transfer that you could have seen in other modules. The second regime is very important, it is called nucleate boiling. It happens over a range of temperature differences ranging from 5 degree Celsius to 30 degree Celsius. This whole regime could be again split into two parts between A and B points B, between points A and B we have individual bubbles formed on the surface and it leaves this uh, it individual bubbles forms on the heater surface and leaves the surface. These continuous formation of the bubble on the surface and disengagement induces a local mixing of fluids. Other than the free convective mixing, the bubble induced mixing enhances the rate of heat transfer and hence their heat transfer coefficient is also increased with delta T. Now, between the points B and C, now we see that the rate of formation of the bubbles are so fast that no longer individual bubbles move, but a train of bubbles coalescing themselves as a, a form of jet or as a form as a column of a vapor, it leaves the surface. So, the, the, there is a picture, the picture given here illustrates this particular regime where you see a column of vapor, a bubble leaving the surface and induces lot of agitative mixing of the fluid. So, due to this densely populated bubbles, bubble motion near the surface, uh, Q the heat flux is proportional to delta t, power, delta t to the power 3 or sometimes even 4 and heat transfer coefficient is proportional to delta t square. And this happens such a way that around point P there is an inflection point where H the heat transfer coefficient reaches a maximum value and above that it starts decreasing. And this regime uh, ends at point C where we call the uh, critical heat flux occur. Next comes the uh, transition boiling which happens between 30 degree Celsius to 120 degree Celsius of delta T. This transition boiling is also known as unstable film boiling or partial film boiling. This regime is characterized by the formation of a local a blanket of vapor film on the surface. In other places nucleate boiling happens, in some other places a, a, a patch of vapor forms on the surface restricting the access of the liquid to the surface. And this is very unstable because in places in, in, sur, on, in on places where nucleate boiling happens switches to film boiling and film boiling surface uh, film boiling uh, regime uh, film boiling uh, surface switch to nucleate boiling. Uh, this is a very unstable uh, situation. Uh, in this particular regime both uh, uh, Q and H decreases with delta T. This happens because of this blanket of vapor restricting the axis between the surface and the liquid. The final regime is film boiling. In the film boiling regime, the temperature difference is so high that on the heater surface a thin bed, a thin blanket of vapor is always present and the vapor bubble forms from the interface between this vapor and the liquid above that. The liquid has no direct contact with the surface any longer. So, the heat transfer from the liquid to the, the heat transfer from the surface to the liquid is limited by the uh, presence of the thin film of the vapor. In this regime, the heat transfer mode is dominated by conduction of the vapor, conduction through the vapor as well as radiation through the vapor. Now, we noted that uh, 
in the boiling experiment we have a, a critical or a maximum heat flux point and when we try to increase the heat flux beyond this point there is a sudden jump in delta t. It may happen so that the increase in delta t may result in melting of this heating surface if the melting point is melting point of the heating element is less than the the temperature that the temperature jump. This refers to boiling crisis or burnout point. This happens when the temperature of this surface is above the melting point of the filament. Therefore, it is important to know the critical flux of a given liquid and uh, heater combination, so that we do not exceed that heat flux in, in our experiments. Now, as far as the nucleation is concerned, the nuclear boiling dominates most of the industrial uh, boiling uh, equipments, but the boiling process is so complicated in the nucleated boiling, uh, because it involves the formation of this uh, uh, random spontaneous formation of bubbles, the growth, the mixing induced by them. We have uh, experimental correlations for heat transfer coefficients or heat flux. One such example is given here, where in the nucleate boiling regime, the heat flux is proportional to delta t, delta t to the power 3 and it also depends on two parameters that are system specific. Depending upon the liquid that we want to boil and depending upon the, uh, the nature of the surface that we have in this experiment. This parameter C s f and parameter n, these are dependent on these system. Uh, for example, if you take water, copper, whether it is polished or not, these values might differ. Other properties of the liquid and the vapor are used in calculating the heat flux versus delta t in this experiment. As I said before, in boiling experiment, it is important to calculate as accurately as possible the critical heat flux as well as the minimum heat flux, so that we can operate the boiling equipment within these two limits. Again, there are empirical correlations to calculate the critical flux for large horizontal cylinders, spheres and large surfaces. And for uh, large horizontal plates, we have empirical correlations for Q minimum or the minimum heat flux. So, using these estimates, one can calculate the minimum or maximum heat flux for, for a boiling experiment. Coming to film boiling, film boiling is relatively easy to model, because it always has a thin layer of vapor around it and we can account for heat transfer through this thin film of vapor and we get the Nusselt number correlations for uh, film boiling in the same way that we derive uh, heat transfer coefficient for condensation using Nusselt theory that we will be seeing in another module. Here the Nusselt number correlations are calculated based on the properties of the vapor, because the heat transfer is through the vapor. Now, when the delta t is very large, we often have to include the radiative heat transfer through the vapor also. So, the total heat transfer coefficient can be given as sum of the convective heat transfer coefficient and the radiative heat transfer coefficient. And the radiative heat transfer coefficient can be calculated based on the temperature of the heated surface and the saturation temperature of the liquid using the emissivity. Now, so far we looked at uh, pool boiling correlations. So, now we will talk about forced convection boiling. The forced convection can happen by sending a fluid through a surface externally or internally into a cylindrical tube. For experiments involving a pressure driven flow of liquid over a hot surface, horizontal uh, surface, we can calculate the Q max, the critical heat flux using these expressions. These expressions are depend on Weber number, which is defined as rho v v square d by gamma. We first estimate the Weber number, 
and using the Weber number we calculate the Q max for external forced convection boiling where the fluid is sent past a hot surface by external means. Now to see whether we are really working at low velocity conditions this particular condition can be verified whether this, whether this particular condition is satisfied or not can be verified. Forced convection can also happen within a tube in this case we have a vertical tube and the liquid is sent from the bottom at a temperature below its saturation temperature and this tube is externally heated. As the liquid ink rises up either by uh, the liquid rises up as the liquid rises up the temperature increases the first we have forced a convective heat transfer and as the fluid moves upwards we see the formation of bubbles we have a bubbly zone then the vapor bubbles coalesce and form a slug and eventually these slugs coalesce to form a, an annular vapor zone near the core of the tube around this annulus the liquid flows at even higher heights most of the liquids are now vaporized and you see a mist of liquid droplets and above that all the liquid is vaporized and only the vapor escapes from the top. From that point onwards only a forced convection of heat transfer of vapor forced convection vapor forced convection happens. In this figure we also see the dependence of heat transfer coefficient across this tube at the bottom most and the top most we have forced convective heat transfer coefficient for the liquid and vapor in between depending upon the nucleation or the boiling regime the heat transfer coefficient may vary and we see that around the this particular zone the heat transfer coefficient is the highest. Correlations have been proposed to calculate heat transfer coefficient for these kind of internal forced convection boiling it is given as here this depends on the mass flow rate per cross section of the fluid also depends on the fraction of the vapor x and some system dependent parameters namely the GSF that depends on what is the liquid and what is the surface combinations. HL here is the heat transfer coefficient of the pure liquid in the forced convective regime. For this particular presentation these following references are being used. Thank you.